Every so often when I buy something on eBay, particularly cheap items, I'll just add another item or two from the same seller because there's a certain element of guilt at ordering something for 99 cents shipped to the UK. And one of the items uh, I added on was this little power bank, and it's it's empty. Well, it's not empty now. It comes without a battery in it just because, well, battery, you know, shipping regulations have made things a bit tricky that way. But um, it's a typical 18650 single cell power bank. And what makes this interesting is that when I went on looking in my purchase history, I was going into the purchase history for something like, say, for instance, when I was uh, making the video about this, the cheapest bulkhead ceiling type light on eBay. I'll go into the purchase history, find that listing, and then I'll print the first page off so I can like say, this is what I bought. But in this case, uh, when I was looking for previous purchases, I noticed that some items had been removed by eBay. And you know, they do that thing that uh, they say, uh, this item has been, this listing has been removed by eBay. If you've already paid, then it's fine. But if you've not paid, then don't pay or don't proceed with this purchase. And one of the items that had been removed was this. I don't know why it was removed. I don't know if someone had had an incident with one, perhaps a little smoky lithium incident, or if it, I don't think it's in breach of someone's design copyright. But anyway, it's a neat little thing. Uh, you can slide a plastic drawer out inside and it takes a single 18650 cell. And it's worth mentioning that it's a tight fit. Uh, this... Uh, 18650 cell is not protected. It is a proper standard 18650 cell that has been ripped out of something. What was it out of? Uh, 1,200 milliamp power. It was out of a Poundland power bank. And it's actually better in this one because it actually offers better functionality. But uh, lower standby leakage current is the main advantage. But uh, one of the things that I think could be an issue is the spring at the back here is one of those big wide springs. If you put in some cells that don't have proper insulation over the uh, outer negative sheath versus the positive, then sometimes you can put the cell in and it shorts the battery out. Uh, and, you know, it bridges from the centre contact to the outer side and it will cause a bit of a smoky meltdown. Uh, that's the only can think, thing I can think of, because otherwise it seems quite competent. And the idea is that uh, you do just, you know, you get your own cell, whether it's a new one or an old one, and you ram it into the holder and suddenly you've got a nice little power bank, and it, it's very effective. But I thought, okay, let's uh, take a look at it and see if there's any flaw that I can find in this. And I looked at the chip, and the chip is an HT4928S, so I looked up the data sheet, and it turns out it's a very interesting power bank indeed, because of the sheer lack of components. So here's the schematic here. And one of the first things that struck me as really odd is that the input and the output connector, the output is the big connector, the input is the micro USB for charging, they're just connected together. And the negatives are connected together and the positives are connected together. And you think, so how does it know when it's, you know, if it's putting out five volts all the time, how does it know it's being charged then? Because it has to detect the five volts come in, but they're bridged together. And it does so in a very clever way. The circuitry has a single capacitor, 22 microfarad shown here, on the input for stability. It provides a buffer. It means that as this uh, in involves, uh, well, that it's also, it's actually acting as the output uh, one here. Uh, the uh, inductor that's used to step the voltage up, that will provide a sort of reservoir. It provides stability to it. But there's also another capacitor, 10 microfarad, between the battery and the zero volt rail which uh, provides stability again because uh, because this the inductive step-up circuit draws current as a series of spikes, it just makes the circuitry more stable. So a capacitor on the uh, socket side and a capacitor on the battery side. And after that, you've got the inductor and two LEDs charging and discharging, and that is it. It's a really super simple chip. And uh, there is a block diagram um, which uh, doesn't really help an awful lot because... The block diagram has, well, it's all Chinese, and I use the translation app, and it, it really says charge discharge indicator, that's the two LEDs, control logic, charge circuit, and step up circuit, that is it. That is not actually terribly helpful. I was hoping for a bit more information than that. So uh, using the translation app, I found that it's, uh, 
got the upper voltage cut off of 4.2 volts, it does have a facility to detect a, a battery that's gone down to zero volts and provide a recovery, slow recovery current, just to recover the battery up to its uh, proper set of charge level. And that, if it detects it's below about 2.8 volts, it will go into that recovery mode, which is 10% of its charge current. And as standard, the charge current in this is 800 milliamps. Also, it's notable the output is actually only rated 800 milliamps, which makes it a fairly low output power bank. It's a sub one amp output power bank, which is a bit strange, um, but they must have their reasons. So um, it also has over temperature protection. If it's trying to charge a very low battery, uh, with a 5 volt or higher input, uh, if it detects that the chip get, reaches about 130 degrees Celsius, it will go into thermal protection mode and it will reduce the current. I think it reduces it progressively right down to about zero, according to the Chinese here. Um, and likewise, if you overload it when you're uh, trying to draw current from, if you're driving a really high load, it will cut out uh, above one amp. Uh, but it also has a thermal protection of about 150 degrees Celsius, which seems quite a lot, but it's normal for modern chips. Um, and it will then just shut the output off if it detects that. So quite interesting. Uh, other features, uh, the oscillator frequency for driving the inductor is one megahertz, which results in very high efficiency. And the Typical applications suggest are mobile power, as in this case, LED lighting or toys. Not so sure about LED lighting for a reason, which I shall cover in a moment. So to be able to detect whether it's charging or not, what it actually does is it puts out a slight waveform that output. It, it puts out typically about 5.1 volts. But every two seconds, it just drops to 4.7 volts. And the reason it does that is because the input and the output are connected together in parallel, it can then detect when it drops to 4.7 volts, if it sees the voltage didn't drop, it then knows it's been plugged into a charger and that it should be charging and it will switch into charging mode. Um, this has a few quirks. If I stick in, you're not going to see this, but uh, I shall describe what's happening. If I plug in a light like this, and you use it as a flashlight, it's a tiny bit annoying. Because it drops from its standard output voltage of 5.1 volts to 4.7 volts every two seconds, and it only does it for four milliseconds, but you can see that. Every two seconds, the output just goes dip, just a tiny little dip, but it's visible. And that's the point it's actually sensing whether something's plugged in to charge it. It's notable that they say from the outset that this thing has the feature that if you plug it into a charger and a load at the same time, then normally the uh, unit will uh, allow the load to be powered directly from the charger. Uh, and it'll also charge this uh, cell up at the same time. But as soon as a power failure, this will automatically kick in. So it can act as a small low-level UPS, you know, it can act as an emergency power source that when the mains power fails, and supposing you've got a charger plugged in like this, uh, then as soon as the power goes off, it will automatically switch the battery and run until that runs down to its lowest voltage threshold, and then it'll cut off. Another oddity is that it does have a standby mode. If it detects that the uh, you've not had a decent load on it for any length of time, something above about 60 milliamps, it will then go into standby mode, and the standby current is minute. It's, it quotes it as being about 13 microamps. I measured it as about 11 microamps, so it's pretty good. But uh, it's got an odd quirk that kind of makes it annoying, and I'm looking around for, for something I had here that I have now misplaced. No, there it is. If you plug in a very low lighting load, like these LED lights, Unfortunately, I'm not sure if you're going to see this. I shall hold it up. Uh, it might not even be caught on the camera. But every 12 to 14 seconds, it kind of it goes into standby mode and then comes out of it again. Did, you saw it there. It just dipped the lights. And it's going to keep doing that. It does it all the time, which means if you're trying to just power a small string of LED lights off this for decorative purposes, then it's quite annoying because it does that shutdown thing uh, it goes into standby and comes out of standby, and it makes them blink roughly every 12 to 14 seconds, which is a bit odd. It kind of spoils it for certain applications. 
Uh, the wake up uh, current is about ten microamps, and the sh- the stand uh, the hold on current is sixty milliamps here. It's a very interesting chip. It's a very minimalist chip. Uh, there's the bit referencing the ten percent low voltage trickle charge for recovering the battery. Um, but it's an interesting little power bank. It's a neat power bank. Um, aside from the fact it will definitely only take an actual 18650 cell, it won't take the one with protection on it. But note that in the design of it, and I tested this, it's not doing what some of these chips do, and it's just enabling or disabling the uh, boost converter, the inductor here, to actually drive the voltage up. It is switching it through the chip. And when the voltage goes too low, instead of just turning the boost converter off but potentially allowing current to still flow through the load, it will actually turn it off. It really, it, if you if you charge the battery up to the full capacity of 4.2 volts, it will turn the, it will stop the charge current. And if you over discharge it be below about say three volts, it will also, it will shut it off completely. It won't let any current out at all until it's been boosted back up again. So it's actually a very complex little chip. Um, it's obviously a cheap, simple solution with just such a low component count. Two LEDs, if desired, two capacitors and the inductor is all that's required. It's a very neat little unit. And uh, I like the plastic tray because that does provide good insulation. And uh, when you slide it in, it sits, it sits nicely into the end here. And then the cap, when it goes on, does just snug that up nicely. So, uh, interesting little uh, power supply. I'd like to give you a link to it, but unfortunately that listing has been taken down and, you know, you get so many that look similar, but they have completely different circuitry because there are so many manufacturers just copying the standard design. But uh, it's it's definitely one of the more interesting little power supplies I've seen. It's just a shame it's got that niggly little feature that does keep, if you connect uh, any LED light source to it, it, either with a high current light source, it just does that, tiny dip every so often but if you connect a low current source it physically cuts them off every so often because it goes into standby and then sort of reboots but other than that it's very interesting so that's the hot chip ht4928s is the secret sauce in this particular design very neat indeed